I think the Azores might just be Europe's best kept secret. Approximately 1,500 kilometers west of Portugal's mainland, right in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, are nine remote volcanic islands, collectively known as the Azores. My girlfriend Olivia and I admittedly had no idea they even existed until about three weeks before our trip. But as soon as we stumbled upon them, we realised they ticked all of our criteria and we'd set the bar rather high in terms of what we wanted. Adventure, not overrun by tourists, mountains, and just to keep Olivia happy, we needed some kind of spa experience. And so, we flew to the largest island, São Miguel, where we began our week in the Azores. So it's our first day in the Azores and we are hiking quite possibly one of the most scenic hikes I've ever done. Sets, see your daddies. Do you want to try it again? No, less Essex accent. One thing that I am incredibly aware of is how much I'm going to butcher the Portuguese language while I'm out here. But do you know what? It's the effort that counts. Right, babe? Absolutely. The Set Cidades Crater Lake is one of the seven wonders of Portugal. And for good reason. The five kilometer wide, forest covered, extinct volcanic cauldron is made up of two lagoons, one blue and one green. It's located on the northwestern side of São Miguel. There are many miradors you can view it from, or like us, you can embark on a 12 kilometer hike from Mirador Boca do Inferno car park all the way round the parameter of the crater until you reach the small town of Set Ciudades, which we made our home for the night. If you're after a traditional beach holiday, then the Azores is certainly not for you. Sao Miguel's coastline is made up of jagged lava rock and a ferocious sea. It's far from a comfortable sunbathing spot. There is, however, one hugely redeeming feature, a natural thermal ocean pool called Ponta de Ferraria, which is heated by the volcanic magma below. After an hour of swimming and relaxing in what was essentially a heated wave pool, we grabbed some exceptional seafood in the nearby town of Mostaros before beginning our journey west to Furnas, stopping off at the highest point of the island, Lagoa de Fogo, which we'd been told was a must see. Here we are at the mesmerizing Lagoa de Fogo. And it's ironic because it's shrouded in fog. <laughs> we really could be anywhere right now. <laughs> Olivia's just demonstrating um, what we're supposed to be looking at. So if you can just like imagine that that is there behind, that would be greatly appreciated. In hindsight, I strongly recommend browsing the Visit Azores website and checking the live webcams before visiting any viewpoint in the Azores. The weather is incredibly temperamental and you can easily drive from gorgeous sunshine to thick, cold fog in a matter of minutes. So the weather's clouded over a bit today, so we're thinking we're going to take it easy, stay local, not drive anywhere and just explore the beautiful national park that our hotel is right in the centre of. And so we're starting at Caldiras das Fernas, as you can see behind me. Looks like the forest is on fire, but I can confirm that is not the case. Shall we go and have a look? The entire Furnace Valley is a large volcanic crater which last erupted in 1630. 
The whole place is alive with hot, bubbling springs and steaming geysers. <laughs> oh yeah, and the whole place smells like putrid egg. Oh, it smells like that horrible pull my finger joke. <laughs> So last night for dinner, we had the local delicacy, which is a slow cooked stew. And the way that it's cooked is they bore holes in the ground around here and they put the stew directly into those holes and the heat of the volcano cooks your dinner. After a long day of hiking and breathing in sulphur, we ended our day at the Terra Nostra Garden Hotel where we were staying. The hotel is renowned for its thermal pool 40 degrees Celsius in temperature and an impressive bright orange in colour. A great way to end our three-day stint in São Miguel. But that rest and relaxation did not last. We soon found ourselves on Pico Island and we were there for one reason. Okay, so you could say we're about to reach the peak of our holiday because tomorrow we're climbing Mount Pico. Mount Pico is a stratovolcano in the middle of Pico Island with an altitude of 2,351 metres above sea level. It's the tallest mountain in Portugal. I'm actually really excited. I was initially quite nervous. Um, however, now that we've arrived and it seems like the weather isn't uh, horrific. I mean, I know it, currently it's windy and raining, but I think that's a nighttime thing. The weather forecast tomorrow looks like it's going to be clear. In keeping with the famous unpredictability of Azores weather, Pico the next morning was far from clear. We would have definitely given up and turned around if we hadn't have been with our tour group and our amazing guide, Hai. Instead, we pressed on through the rain following each other closely, like a flock of drenched, but optimistic sheep. After about four hours of hiking, the visibility seemed to only be getting worse. As you can see, behind is the crater, <laughs> as you can see. But to be honest, we were just grateful to make it to the top. Oh, how'd you feel? Wet. <laughs> Soaked to the bone. <laughs> but satisfied. And just like that, as if Pico herself was rewarding us for persevering to the summit, the clouds lifted, revealing an unforgettable view. We spent the final day of our holiday exploring Pico Island and some of its unique 500-year-old vineyards, characterised by acres of small stone walls erected to protect the vines from harsh wind and sea spray. It's rare that a place ticks all of your boxes, but as we raised a glass of the island's finest volcanic wine, we both agreed that the Azores 100% did.